Hi, I'm Tam Wrigley and this is Conversations with Women. It is a show where I sit down with five women over five decades to talk about real world issues and the things that matter most to them. In this episode, I have breakfast with the girls and discuss all things career. Do we still live in a man's world and how has the landscape changed for the career focused woman? So sit back and enjoy the conversation. I've been thinking a lot lately, I've got a 14 year old who's, you know, grade nine this year and they're, they're really starting to pressure, I think, the, the kids at school about where you want to be, where do you want to go in life, mm-hmm. what career path do you want to go down. Do you think we're putting too much pressure on our children at, you know, 16 and 17 to know what they want to do when they hit the workforce? Definitely, yeah, without definitely. a doubt. I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do at that age. No. I thought I wanted to be an air hostess, didn't end up going down that path, but I think there's so much pressure on them. Um, I remember my children going through high school Mm -hmm. um, and they were freaking out because everybody kept telling them, grade 12, it's going to be insane. What subjects do you want to do? Um, What do you want to do in life? You know, who knows? I mean, Mm -hmm. they don't even want to know what they want to do next week, let alone in the future. Mm -hmm. I think it's way too much pressure. What about yeah, the, the university? You know, like I think there's a lot of stigma about you must go to university to be successful. Do you think that's a yes or a no? School puts a lot of pressure on it. Mm-hmm. It's completely focused, especially even from grade nine or 10. It's all about what OP you get, which at the end of the day, you don't really need. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I tend to disagree. I think that if you can have something there, regardless of what the, the undergraduate degree is, it opens up a lot of doors and a lot of avenues that you can explore. I mean, my brother did archaeology and now he works in business. But it's just having that one undergraduate degree that opens up a lot of doors in in various business avenues. So do you think generationally, obviously because there is more opportunity now for women, that's why you see a lot of women chop, or a lot of people, I guess, chopping and changing through careers. Like back in your day, as you said, you stayed in one job for 50 years or 40 Mm -hmm. years and now you see you know, okay, five years here and seven years there yeah. and three years there and... See, I wonder about the security and the loyalty and mm. when when people are changing all the time mm. and how can they how can they learn that job properly when they, they've skipped from something that's totally different? I mean, I see um, it all the time because I have a real estate office and I've yes. been in real estate for 20 years mm-hmm. and I see the resumes when we have to hire somebody... One, as an employer, it's like, oh, you've only been... Every 12 months you seem to be changing jobs. Mm. Do you think it's in the pursuit of happiness that they're doing that? I think they're they're confused mm. about what they want. Yeah. Mm. Personally, if you were happy, I think you would stay where you were and Mm. try to do your best. Mm. Mm. But, uh, you know, if someone... Maybe not every 12 months, that's that's a huge (laughs) amount of uh, movement, but every five, six, seven years... um, Arguably, their skill set and their, their breadth of, of knowledge is so much wider, particularly if they're going into something like real estate. You know, imagine how they could relate to so many potential, different potential mm. buyers. Like, there's two sides to the coin, you know, uh, like you said, Diane, about the loyalty and the security of that longevity, but then also this, this um, huge differing life experience of all these different career paths. Doesn't that bring something interesting to the table for a prospective employee? I think Definitely. looking at it, though, like from my perspective, is be why. Why are you, why are you changing mm. jobs every two or three years? You know, because for, for me, I want to employ somebody who's been, who's loyal, like you said, loyal, and who wants to just work and stay in that one job for 10, mm. 15 years. It's and solid. When you, yes, and that's solid. And it seems to be more your generation mm-hmm. that uh, like to jump ship every six or 12 months. <laughs> can you blame us? We get bored. <laughs> yeah, and can I say, mm. I think it's something to do with the technology and the instant gratification. Mm. Mm. Because I know when even my generation, you know, you sort of, I don't know, you, there was more tunnel vision, but I think, I don't know, I can't explain it to you, but... Teenagers in this generation, it's more about more, 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 mm. you know. And that I know when I was 21, 
you know, I was probably on like $20,000 a year, you know, not yeah. a lot because, yeah. you know, you weren't back then. Whereas I find that this generation expect to be paid like this massive amount of money yeah. mm -hmm. to do a job that you think, mm -hmm. you know, you need to learn to, to start at the entry level at and work bottom. your way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't think they want to now. They no, just want to go straight up here. That and nothing against people who have a university degree, but they do expect they've got that degree, they start the top instead yeah, of having to work yeah. their way from the bottom all the yeah. way to the top, like yeah, everybody yeah. else has to. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much education you've got or experience. If you're starting a new job, mm. you've got to start at the bottom. Do you think we're still a male-dominant workforce? Or yes, yes. Mm. most mm. definitely. They're Where in the you... higher positions a yeah. lot of the time, aren't Not they? a lot of women in the C-suite. No, there's not. Mm. I think it varies across the industry. Why do you think yeah. that is? I think there's a glass ceiling for women that, that can never be erased because, and this is this may cause controversy, but you, women carry babies. So regardless, they're going to have to take a small amount of time off. So in saying that, what does success mean to you? It would be having the job that I've always dreamed of. So whether that's being a TV presenter or being a TV journalist, Ever since I was little, I knew that I wanted to do something around that industry. Mm -hmm. So if I'm successful in that, if I get a job that I'm content with and I'm not always striving for more, that's success and I'm content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa? Um, yeah, probably more being content and settled and wanting to go to work and knowing that I'm making a difference yep. for whatever it may be and be mm. excited to be there. Mm. 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 Oh, for me, it's, it's similar. It's the contentment, but the, hap the happiness and the... Mm. And the wanting to get up out of bed every morning and, mm. and do what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Mine's happiness. Uh, you've got to be happy. If definitely. you're not happy, you know, yeah. you're miserable. So, no, definitely happiness for me. Yeah. But when you say you'd always wanted to, to do a job since you were five, that's where I, I never had that aspiration mm. to, you know, I was just content to plod along, worked all the time and did it well, but... Um, mm. Never had yeah. that dream, that fight. The drive. Yeah. See, I wasn't. I was mm. like that. I didn't know when I left school. I did not know what I wanted to do at mm. all. Mm. And I just, it was, you know, I just fell into real estate. It was, you know, at 18 or in looking for a job as a receptionist. And I guess for success for me is to see, I think personally, knowing that I didn't finish school, you know, I was 16 yeah. when I finished school, and I look back and reflect over my life as to where I am now, that's success to me. I have been a driver of my own achievements and my mm. own success. And I think that for me is success. It, you know, it's not about the money and it's not about being a CEO and it's not about this for me. It's about mm. what is your drive? What is your dream? Um, where, you know, are you living your authentic life and your, your authentic self? And if you mm. can say yes, 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 then I think that's success. Mm.